Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today I will be talking about Yakuza 4, which I just beat yesterday. So, talking about while well, it's still fresh on my mind. Um, so my experience with the series so far has been Yakuza 0, Kiwami 1 and 2, and 3. So I've played pretty much everything that happens before Yakuza 4. Um, usually there's like a couple things I know about the game beforehand, but for this one I've actually gone in pretty much blind. I didn't really know anything about the game except for things I could have assumed from previous ones. Um, so yeah, just going straight into uh, the overview of the plot. So um, a new group threatens to kind of take down the Tojo clan and of course Kiryu gets involved. But not only Kiryu, but three other people um, get dragged into this incident and try to stop it from happening. But I'm, you know, I don't like to give like very um, long plot overviews, but that's just like kind of the basic thing. Which literally sounds like most of them, but anyway. Um, so things I liked about this game in particular. Um, just going off like what I was thinking of first. Um, the game runs really well. Uh, so it runs, at least since I'm playing on PS5, it runs at 1440p at 60 frames a second, which is really nice. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is really smooth when you're playing. Especially it matters when you're in fights. It doesn't really matter for 60 like outside of fights but when, when it does matter it it is very nice um secondly i think this sometimes the story is just not even sometimes it was mainly just in three the story itself wasn't super duper great and in the story overall was more carried by the characters than the actual plot in three but i think in in yakuza 4 like there's a great balance of both like the the plot is actually good and the characters are good and that makes for a great story overall so i think it's a lot better than in three um and the characters just going off of that so they introduced three new characters of so you actually end up playing as kiryu last but you start off um with akiyama who is a new guy um saijima who was um Majima's brother back before uh, the incident in 1985, which is talked about a little bit in Yakuza 0, um, and Tanemura, who's a detective who's just trying to do the right thing. And so yeah, I think just overall, a lot of these like new characters worked really well and made the story interesting, but since you get to play as four characters overall, you also have four different play styles, and I think all of them are fun. I mean, I, I think some are better than others. Like, um, Tanimura is more like combos, whereas, um, Saijima is a lot more like super armor tank, um, just like pure brutal strength. Uh, and, you know, of course, Kiryu, you know, it's like a good mix of like both speed and strength. Um, but yeah, this, this new combat is good. And then I think just the combat overall is a lot better than it was in Yakuza 3. Because Yakuza 3 had the problem where, like, any enemy that wasn't, like, a street enemy would just guard, like, all the time constantly. And it was just really, really annoying boss fights because they just would, like, never stop guarding. And they'd usually have a weapon equipped with infinite durability, so you couldn't, like, break their guard without, like, also having a weapon. Except your weapon would have durability, so once that breaks, you're kind of stuck until they somehow drop their guard. Um, but... Yakuza 4 fixes that problem by making them guard, like, less frequently, which makes the fights actually fun again. Um, and yeah, because it is Yakuza, there's, like, a hundred, <laughs> not a hundred, but a great deal of, uh, minigames. Um, the one I noticed in this one that's, like, brand new is, uh, Ping Pong, and that one was fun. So it's like, you go into, uh, an open air hot spring bath, and then afterwards you can play Ping Pong. And I, I thought it was decently fun. But yeah. Um, I didn't play every single minigame. Because a lot of them, you know, are also in other ones as well. So I don't I don't bother to play them every single time. Since I've kind of been grinding through the series this year. And I'm pretty sure I'll never learn how to play Mahjong or Sh Shogi. But whatever. Um, next up, I think the... I talked about this in my Yakuza 3 video that the OST or the soundtrack overall was just kind of lacking. Like there were a couple one good ones, but mo for the most part, it just wasn't hitting it like the other ones were. And I'm glad to say that uh, 
The soundtrack in this one is absolutely fire, just like all the others. I, th I guess Yakuza 3 is just kind of a dud in that regard, but this soundtrack is fire. In particular, um, For Faith, absolute banger of a song. But yeah, um, also sort of related to combat. I don't know why I didn't bring this up earlier, but um, I also said this about Yakuza 3, that the EXP system for like leveling up um, and unlocking new abilities was kind of stupid because you couldn't really see what you were unlocking next. Uh, you just had to kind of guess. Like, you knew what was happening immediately in your next level, but then after that, you have no clue what's happening. But in this one, they fixed that problem because it's basically just, like, you get, like, um, points for every time you level up, and you can just spend them on, like, whatever in any particular order unless it, like, builds off of a previous one. So you can pretty much just do whatever you want in, like, the amount of custom customizing and, like, since you can basically just choose like which ones you think are important to get first so as soon as um tiger drop became available as kiryu i i immediately got that but you did have to like get a couple things before that but you know that's a i just know that that's a broken move so i just gotta cop that as soon as possible um but yeah i think other than that um since it's kind of going back to how yakuza zero i guess not going back since this came out before that, but uh, it it does this thing where it changes characters. But unlike Yakuza Zero, which is kind of like going back and forth each chapter, once you get to a certain point, it pretty much stays as like like sagas. Where like the first saga you play as Akiyama, the moneylender. Second saga, uh, Saijima. Third saga, Tanimura. Then fourth saga, um, Kiryu. And then going to the final saga where it's like you get to play as like all f four characters finish up whatever sub stories you had and then head to like the final battle but i think that overall how they had this where it's kind of like an episodic thing for each character i think it actually worked really well into building the plot and the story of the game because it like what it would do is just like you end off on a cliffhanger for one character and then like a couple things from the previous uh person's saga would like kind of show up in the next person you're like kind of trying to connect the dots between the four main characters and seeing how it all you know connects by the end of Kiryu's and I think it was really nice throwing this out there a bit after recording I uh, forgot to talk about it but um rooftops are now accessible and so is the underground um for certain places which is pretty neat um that's a new thing to this game but just want to throw that out there quickly so for the things that I didn't like so much um, first off, I, similarly to Yakuza 3, it uses the same graphic style, which I think just didn't age very well. Uh, it's just kind of like a mid-early PS3 thing. Just doesn't really look that great when you up it. Um, I th I'm pretty sure Yakuza 5 is a bit better in this category, because from what I've seen, it doesn't look too bad. But I definitely think that, um, you know, it just doesn't look that great. Um... And another thing I was kind of surprised with is that um, it it also uses sub stories the same way as Yakuza 3, where it kind of just shows you where it starts and then it just doesn't tell you how to get to the next part. So sometimes I'd have to just like randomly find it or look up where I was supposed to go. But for the most part, unless it was like one that's continuous, like it has multiple parts, I felt like the sub stories in themselves like were probably maybe my least favorite in the entire series so far that I played. I just didn't find a whole lot of them to be super duper interesting, except for the ones that were, you know, like multi-part ones, like uh, Saijima helping a little kid find his sister, or Tanimura so solving one of his dad's cases that he couldn't do before he died. Like, those were really good, but like, other than those two in particular, I'm, I can't really think of anything that were, I was like, yeah, that's pretty good. They were all either pretty, they were kind of just mid, or they were just not great. Um... And speaking of mid, I think that the plot overall has a lot of good, like, sub-villains, but when it comes to, like, the main antagonist, it, he's probably my least favorite main antagonist of all of them so far. Um, you know, not better than Nishiki or uh, Mine or Ryuji. Um, but he, he does the job well, and I think that, honestly, the more... Not the the sub villains kind of carry that sort of role of like a better antagonist, but overall, just yeah, I'm just kind of disappointed by that. Um, and another thing similar to 
uh, Yakuza 3, you can't run uh, around the map, so it, like getting everywhere is a pain in the butt. Uh, and because taxis aren't um, in the middle of the city, if you're in the middle of the city, if you go somewhere, you have to walk all the way across. Um, I kind of was spoiled by that in Kiwami 2 when they started adding like taxis like all over the city instead of just on like the edges. But yeah, so unless you're like chasing down a person or something, there's really no way to run across the map just in like certain like sequences. Also throwing this out there, the people in the overworld just um, spawn in weirdly and I think that's also kind of a con. Overall, I think I really liked Yakuza 4. Um, I played enough games, I feel like I can make a tier list, so I'm gonna put that on the screen, like, what my current, like, views of each Yakuza game are, and kind of, like, my rankings of them, but I, I give the game a 6 out of 7 overall, like, I really liked it, and I'm looking forward to playing Yakuza 5 next, um, but yeah, that's it for now, um, let me know what y'all thought in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.